Okay, give him another round of applause for doing that so quickly. All right, well, welcome to the Grammy Museum, everybody. My name is Michael Sticka, and I'm the executive director of the museum. We're very, thank you. I, you should save that applause because there's uh, much better guys coming on stage. Uh, so listen, welcome to everybody here tonight and actually everybody that's tuning in on people's live stream. So let's give them a hand as well. So the Grammy Museum is thrilled to be opening our new exhibit, Backstreet Boys, The Experience. How many of you saw it out there? So it actually opens to the public on Wednesday, April 10th. So you saw it before everybody else. I think some of you even saw it maybe before or right after the band saw it. So uh, it's amazing. And I want to give a shout out to our amazing curatorial team led by Nick Vega. So they did a fantastic job. Also, I want to thank um, our sponsor for underwriting the exhibit, uh, Blue Shield of California. So they, they deserve a huge round of applause for doing this. You know, tonight was a benefit, um, and it actually benefits all of our museum education programs. So part of our mission here at the Grammy Museum is to, you know, fill the gap of music education. So we're very proud to do that, and we're very happy that the Backstreet Boys came tonight and, um, you know, provided this experience for you so that we can pass this on to students throughout Los Angeles. So you all deserve a round of applause as well for doing that. And our host tonight, um, I, I want to thank him, Jojo Wright from Kiss FM, Kiss FM Los Angeles. Yeah. We just met for the first time upstairs. He's fantastic, so this is going to be great. And he's, uh, the, and he's the host of the national iHeartRadio countdown for moderate, uh, countdown. So how many have listened to that before? So let's thank Jojo for moderating tonight. Yeah. And then uh, last but not least, I want to thank the one and only uh, Backstreet Boys for their incredible team. They warned me about that. Uh, we're honored to have you guys here this evening, and we couldn't be more excited to celebrate your impact on music and the impact that you've had on your fans. And so thank you for providing this one-of-a-kind of experience for all of our visitors here at the Grammy Museum. So ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, Jojo Wright. Is this my mic? I don't know. Let's do it. All right. I get to interview the Backstreet Boys again? Oh, oh man. Are you guys ready for some Backstreet Boys love tonight? This is so exciting. They, uh, they, let me put my notes down. I'm a big note freak. I carry my notes everywhere. These guys, when they, uh, they, they sent me a couple of texts, said, hey, would you uh, be interested in hosting this thing? It was a real honor. I've known the guys for so long, and you'll see some of these pics, like that one right there. That was from the uh, Black and Blue Jet years ago. That's from the iHeart Theater. They just did that one probably like six months ago. We'll go through these pics in a couple of moments. But I've known these guys for so long. They're the best guys ever. Who you think they are is who they are. They're just wonderful guys, not to mention talented, successful. Uh, let's just bring these guys up. Backstreet Boys. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> That's AJ's shoe closet right there. I did. <laughs> What's up, Nick? What's up, Kevin? You good, man? Look at that, Kevin. You realize Shave his hair off. Jojo. Jojo yes. on the radio. Jojo. You realize Jojo radio. after after 26 years, we need a moderator to keep, you know, to keep, keep this keep whole us, thing, this keep whole us, this keep us, circus and check. Keep us you know? in line. Everything Look, in at, Look at those talking. photos. Look at these. These those were taken at the uh, iHeart Kiss LA. That's your uh, like, first studios. tattoo. That right? was that. Uh, I was showing uh, my tats to them. I don't know why you would want to see my tats when AJ has a hundred. <laughs> well, no, because you, know, you and I, I still have not we gone. We haven't. We have to do this this year. It has to happen. Well, I've done. done. I just so happen to have a tattoo artist coming up on stage. I'm kidding. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. So hold on. Well, I thought the bet was that you were going to get AJ tattooed on you, and then you were going to get JoJo tattooed on you, right? Was yeah, that what AJ. It was to be? Let's... But what's the bet, though? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I just thought that you that don't just do it just to do it. Like, it's got to be a reason. I get it. You know, I should have said after 26 years, if the DNA album goes to number one, yes. 
you have to get my name tattooed on you. Which it did go number one. So, uh, but, you know, brand new bet, brand new bet. We'll All think right, of we'll, it. We'll, we'll figure, figure something it. out. We'll think of something. Clearly, uh, these guys, they're insane, as you can tell. And by the way, we'll go through all these picks. These picks are just addicting. I sent him a bunch of picks of mine, and uh, goodness gracious. That was a really good night, bro. That was an AJ surprise My birthday party. My 40th birthday party. And uh, that's uh, iHeart Theater over there doing some fun stuff over there. No, oh, that's uh, just before you guys got the star on the Walk of Fame right there. Yeah, the party. Right. anniversary party. Airplane. That's the airplane. Look at you. Look at that. I should have wow, been in back wow. there. Whoa. Look at Nick going at me right there. I'm not sure what happened there. Sorry about that. Is that Nick or Aaron Carter? <laughs> <laughs> Who is that? And this, <laughs> this pick right here. We got to talk about this pick in a second, playing video games on the plane. Because, yeah. all right, here we that go. That was Xbox. Oh, yeah. Oh, you and I were in rare form on that Oh, plane. man. Actually, that was Sega Genesis. No, it wasn't. We've oh. had this conversation. It was Mario Kart. We were playing Mario what Kart was like it? crazy. No, no, but I'm talking Kids. about the game system. It was no, it was Genesis. Nintendo 64. Yeah, he's I right. I beg to Kids. differ. I said Kids. Are we so having saying, a debate? Yeah, before we, before we taped the uh, iHeart countdown a couple of weeks back, uh, Nick said, what, I saw you post the pic, JoJo. What, uh, what game system was it? And after that was about a 30-minute conversation of, we don't know. It wasn't PlayStation. It wasn't a PS4. It wasn't a PS1. It was—I don't know what it was, but uh, it was Nintendo 64. I'm pretty sure. Are you sure? Because we were playing Mario Kart on that uh, on that plane. Okay, we were playing Mario Kart. Well, <laughs> you know oh, what? If the picture comes back up, do you see a controller? Because I could tell. All right, I we'll was see what happens. Hey, next time it comes back up, keep your think. eyes there and let us know. I'm okay. sure this is what you guys. We have for the interview, and that's, that's the time. end of the interview. Thank All you. Right. Great. Thank you. This is what you guys came to see. They came to see us argue about what video game controller it was. Hey guys, I'm a, since, the, uh, since the exhibit here kind of goes full circle with Backstreet Boys, I want to take this interview from a full circle perspective. So when I say, uh, what is your first, when I, Backstreet Boys' first memory, whether it be just an audition in, invite, whether it be your first performance at what, SeaWorld, I think, it was, what's, what's the first uh, my thing? My first, well, I think my first memory had to be, <laughs> I tell, we were doing an interview today, <laughs> and it was uh, see, meeting AJ for the first time. At an audition where Lou was there, Donna Wright was there, and it was like, it was a, a call, and it was like a blue paper, I think it was, it was like a blue sheet, and it was the first time when I met uh, AJ, and AJ was choreographing. It was kind of like, he was oh not a God, choreographer. We're back again. <laughs> No. He was not a choreographer. I don't know how he got that title. He needed anyway, a manager, but woman. Well, because I was the only, <laughs> I was the original. 1992 is when I met Lou. So I was the OG original Backstreet Boy a year before. So wow. I, I helped. OG Bone. Thank you. Just makes me feel older. No, but I, I helped. Like when you came to the audition, you had to bring a song and some kind of a dance routine to show that you could dance. If you didn't have a dance routine prepared, I had like a little eight count prepared. And that's and you, what I showed you. Put you it on whatever me. I don't, that was. I don't. Did I do okay? I you don't did remember. great. He but didn't need one. You made he it. had his. You made it, buddy. <laughs> I, I made it. I had two auditions. But it was funny First because we we had a we, we had a song that we had a song that was chosen for. Um, it's a '64. I told oh. you guys. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. I told that now. I Long story short, future. as it can be. I still think it's a. Joke. Oh my God! This is crazy. <laughs> So did we answer that question? No, because I'm not done yet. Hold okay. on. So, so what I'm saying, <laughs> and it's still going. I had, I don't remember. I was a horrible dancer, and I don't think I got it at all. And I just was like, I was 12 and a half, 13 when I met you, and I had this Talking song like prepared, this. and I had Richard Marks uh, take this heart. That was the the song that I danced and sang to, and I was so nervous. I didn't think I got the. I didn't think I got do it. Do you remember the away. choreography? Could you do it right there? AJ, no. go ahead, AJ. AJ, 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 Go ahead, AJ. Show it. I don't even know where I was yesterday, let alone <laughs> what I taught 20, 27 years ago. No, I have no idea. It was it was something really cheese ball. He had a full dance routine prepared. Of course, how he did. He was. Oh yes, he did. Shit. He was pulling we... out like this move. Oh, oh, he was. Oh, there's a video <laughs> of it somewhere. There is. There is. That's how we do it. You know how we do it. <laughs> Hey, was there ever another name besides... Wait, this is how we do it? What yeah. now? Yeah. <laughs> Kevin. <laughs> it was out at, before it was out. In my own head. Do you guys recall <laughs> this at all? Or was this just uh, this, this, this thing? Do, do you yeah, guys were, recall that, this? No, because we didn't... No. So they... There I was wasn't a, there. There was a five. There were five Backstreet Boys before Brian and I ever got involved. And two of the guys didn't work out. And so I... Oh. I replaced one guy because um, 
just fr through word of mouth and um, a friend of a friend told me that there's a guy in Orlando that he's a very wealthy entrepreneur. He's got this record label he's starting, production company. He's got a singing group. They're looking to replace one guy. I think you would be perfect for it. And so I, uh, I sent in my headshot resume, had a meeting with Lou at a pizzeria, and then he showed me photos of them and played their demos. And then I joined the group for a while, and there was another guy that was my same age. I was 21 at the time. He was 21. He's like, man, this uh, one one day home on the way uh, home from rehearsal. Name? Sam. Sam. We were at Phoenix. Phoenix. His name's Stone. Phoenix Stone. Phoenix yeah. Stone. But... Um, <laughs> We were on our way home from rehearsal. He's like, man, I don't think this group's going to go anywhere. I'm, I'm quitting. He's like, I'm done. What? He's like, he's like are you going to, you, you want to, he's like, let's, let, I don't know, let's go to Nashville or something. Let's, he's like, I don't think this is going anywhere. I'm like, I, I want to stick around and give it a, give it a try. <laughs> you imagine that so guy? we looked all over Orlando all, uh, and Miami, and we even reached out to some folks in Nashville, and we couldn't find anybody to fill his spot. And then I was like, well, I got a cousin in Kentucky that can sing. We grew up singing together. The only thing is he's still in school. Um, I don't know if his parents would be okay with him coming, you know, leaving Kentucky. And, they weren't. And coming. <laughs> so then, and then Brian joined the group. And so we didn't audition like Howie and AJ and Nick did from, a, from an ad in a, in a theater newspaper. But we did it through um, just destiny, I think, is how we ended up together. True. Man. This is very true. So my first Backstreet Boy memory was meeting these guys at what they call the band house. Okay? Sounds legit. The band, okay? So this is where the Backstreet Boys started. We the, were living there. Listen, the Backstreet Boys started in a place called the band house. I met these guys. Kevin took me there. We drove there. I met Howie and AJ and Nick for the very first time and their family. We went in the garage where they had these, like, misplaced mirrors on the wall and linoleum on the concrete floor, and that's the start of the Backstreet Boys. And there you go. Howie, anything to add to that? Or? Well, what oh. day was it, Brian? This was April 20th, 1993. No kidding. It was about 7.15 in the evening. Wow. Well, I'm sorry. Wow. No kidding. I'm sorry. It was a Wednesday. No, I'm sorry. It was about 4.15 in the evening. <laughs> The sun was setting over the plains. Yes, we could was. look at the farmer's yeah. almanac and see where the sun was. <laughs> the humidity was 87% that day. <laughs> and it was hot in Florida. I was see like, if the crops God, were any good that year. From yes. Kentucky. Was there ever a Backstreet Boys is the only name you guys ever were, were ever going to go by. Was there any other names ever tossed around? I never got a chance okay. to... Backstreet Boys. To, that was the name. That was was there it. any other names yeah. tossed around? No, I don't that was think the so. name that was already no. like they so, had their own. Lou had already created a hand drawn logo. Which my is mom the actually did logo. that. My Your mom, mom was that? yeah, she did the original. Because his one. mother yeah. was an artist, and that's yeah. where he gets his and that's drawing where she did from. The first one. Um, yeah. But he already had a logo. He already had the name. Because I was like Backstreet Boys. I don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> but it was already trademarked, and they were already in the group. All right. Yes, because clearly we look like we're from the back streets. Uh, of course. You know. Clearly. <laughs> so vicious. But it's actually a Ever been in a market. fight in my <laughs> life? <laughs> and what, have you guys well, ever... Except with me and except I gotta, you. I got to be honest. I got to yeah. come, come clean with What's this Backstreet Boy name thing, okay? Okay. <laughs> we have said over the years that it was from the Backstreet Market. I don't know if that's entirely it true, was. guys. Well, there was a well, Backstreet Market. I don't market. know. I really don't. There, there was, was legitimately market. there was yeah, that's but, where Lou said we had no idea about that until after yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it was a flea market yeah. Yeah. no we weren't named after a flea market yeah, no we, we weren't just thought it was a cool name <laughs> it was a flea yeah. market basically on, that's what Lou told us you were yeah. named no, after like, a same flea market the BC boys the Beach boys the Backstreet boys you guys yeah. yes. you guys are cool my cooler dreams. flea market it you rolls off the tongue no yes cool cooler flea market you like vintage clothing I do. That's but not like shop. that. No, it this look, is going straight to hell. No, it's straight to hell. It was it was explained to us Shh. that the Backstreet AJ, Market was a place on the weekends that kids would go hang out when it was closed was and all that kind no, of stuff. No, no, I was there every weekend. <laughs> Where you <laughs> your story nice you made market. up afterwards? Singing this is how we do it. Oh man! <laughs> Stop saying that. How many of you guys knew that they were named after a uh, flea market? Did you? All right, there's that. Hey, AJ, that tell me real quick. Tell me real quick about the. The, the, the Ryan Gosling story, how you... Uh, so, okay, so I used to live in an apartment complex called Polo South. It was in Kissimmee, Florida, where I went to high school. 
and um, there was a racquetball court and a basketball court that was right in the center of the entire complex. And Britney Spears was living in there. Gosling was living in there because they were all doing the Mickey Mouse Club. So a lot of the actors were all living in there, being flown in from different places, wherever they were you know, born and raised. But I used to see Ryan on the basketball court like almost every afternoon, like religiously. We became friends, and I just kept talking to him about, so there's this group that I, I just joined, and it's going to be big. It's going to be like... Named Boy, after a flea market? You were talking yeah. to him about it, or you were bragging about no, it? No, well, I was excited. He's bragging. And he, I even let him see, because I we had a poster. It was that original poster, which was not very flattering, of us with the tree, like the old like color, that, that color picture. And, and how his leg how was he's up here. How his up like above his ear. <laughs> Kevin is wearing created, like a cut-off flannel shirt. I, created boy band I don't know how he got it up that so high. I, so I had that I picture up, that up hanging anymore. up in my, in my bedroom, and he saw it, and he's like, no, nah, man, this is never going to go anywhere. <laughs> don't, don't hold your breath. Cut to 26 years later, he was wrong. All right. He was wrong. But he, no. So uh, somehow it got misconstrued that he tried to get into the group and didn't. Because you said happened. it in an interview. Because you said it. He never auditioned. <laughs> I you, never said that. You uh, elaborated. <laughs> and uh, they, they took what I said. And on they, the they, truth and in they, an interview, well, and now it's my, legend. This is my point with the flea market crap. It is legend. <laughs> I, didn't, <laughs> I didn't do the flea market. That was Lou. <laughs> that was Lou. I am, I am not the flea market. Oh, my God. So all you have to do is ask one question, and we'll just go. Yeah. Have you noticed My that? goodness. We'll just go. It's true. Hey, what was the uh, first uh, song you ever heard on the radio? And where were you at all that? I was in Brian's car, leaving rehearsal. This is not true, AJ. Yes, it was. <laughs> Once again, you <laughs> not true. heard it on the radio. Listen, no, no, listen. Let me, let me back up, okay? This is, it's, it's partially true. Let me say it's partially true, Okay. That was We've Got It Going On, which was the very first song that came out. It reached 69 on the, on the uh, dance charts here in, the in America. In the U.S. In the U.S. It blew up in Germany. So yep. we just considered ourselves like your bags foreign exchange left. students, and we left for Germany. <laughs> so this guy, he, there's some truth. There was a song called uh, Got to Be There. Yes. And okay? <laughs> I'm going to finish the story. Got to Don't elaborate. Got to be there Finish. was a Michael Jackson and Jackson Five, correct? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Jackson 5. I'm just making sure that I'm telling the story correctly. So we were in a van outside of rehearsal hall in Kissimmee, Florida. Well, before you get into uh, it, don't elaborate. Before, don't no, elaborate. no, no, no. Oh, he couldn't no, do it. No, because I wanted Shit. to go a little further back. Because we used to record. Okay. We were recording songs be before we had a record label at Johnny's house in a closet. You remember? Yeah. And that was one of the cover songs. songs. That didn't sound too good. Got to be there. I'm just Got saying. Like, you remember? We were in the closet. This is true. We were recording but, in the closet. But he has more questions to ask, so I was trying to answer it really fast. Okay? So there's a song called Got to Be There, which, which Nick, Nick was a little kid at the time, okay? So he killed. I mean, he slayed it. He killed. Got to be there before puberty in the morning. I mean, he killed it. So, so this guy calls in. It's a make it or break it on the, on the radio station. Tampa and Bay this, Station. And this was guy, it Bubba the Love Sponge? No. No, it's actually in Orlando. That's what I'm trying to tell you guys. It was in Orlando. We, we were, were done with Orlando. rehearsals. Yes. We were finishing up. So there's like this brand new group called Backstreet Boys. This is called Got to Be There. Check it out. Make it or break it. Call in. Da 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 da. That's when they you know, did that. Make it right, or break JoJo? it things happen. Yeah, right? I've done plenty of those. Back yeah. in the day when yeah, they you've did broken that, us right? a couple times, haven't you, JoJo? Oh, yeah. So this, Call now for all the. Yeah, all so that this fun guy stuff. calls in and he goes, Man, can I just say, do you have a hammer? <laughs> yeah. Does anybody have a hammer? <laughs> That's what That's he said. the first time we heard ourselves on the radio. So we thought we it's were a success. The first hammer. time you heard it was when the guy said, yes. do you have a hammer? Do you have yeah. a hammer? Man, That's not to shatter it. it. Ouch. Yeah. yeah. You just shattered a Backstreet record. I bet I know who that was. That was that guy, Sam, that quit the band a while ago. Oh! Might have been. Whoa! Whoa. Have been Whoa. Whoa. Ba -ba. Conspiracy! Oh my Who God! Knows? Hey, um, another thing as we kind of inch, you know, inch forward in time here. The I, I want it that way. Everybody, everybody loves this song. Everybody, even if you're not uh, familiar with any pop song ever, you know this song. 
Uh, but uh, I love the story. I don't know who wants to tell it. The original, because it's not the, the version we play is not the original version. Or no, no, yeah, no, it's it's no, it, no yes, you it changed is. it. You changed. Yes. There is two versions, but you were right. Yeah. There is two versions, yes. There's the original, which is the one that everyone knows and loves, the one that is still here, about to celebrate 20 years on the 12th. <laughs> Tell me why. Uh, and then... No, that's not the, the record no. label. The record label felt that the song was a little bit confusing. It didn't make much sense, so they asked Max to go back in and rewrite some of the lyrics. With. No more lies. With, with who? Uh, Mutt, right? With Mutt Lang. With, Lang, with yeah. uh, Mutt Lang. No more lies. And <laughs> it... It was subtle word changes, but it, it actually didn't make more sense. But it just didn't, didn't have feel right. It just didn't have that original feeling. And what but, were the lyrics, Brian? No more lies. No, no goodbyes. No goodbyes. It's like uh, stop changing all my favorite lyrics. But the best. So version, we outvoted it. We didn't like it. and We kept the no, original. It's and a great game. Clearly, you guys made the right choice. But yeah. the best version is actually Howard Stern's "Get KY." Whoa. That is the best version of yep. our song Hello. out there. How's that one go? <laughs> Get KY. Oh. You haven't heard and that one Weird yet? Al did one as well. I want it sideways. <laughs> Get KY. And then, it, and then that one finishes. <laughs> Which Backstreet Boy, Boy is gay? gay. That's Wait, the best version. They're all gay. Because <laughs> yeah. we're happy so, people. So, thank you, Howard thank Stern. You. Wow. So, no. Howard thank is Howard actually, Stern. Howard's a true fan. So, as a thank you, we brought him a big box of KY jelly to the interview that, that day oh, that's to beautiful. say thank you. With a yes. bunch of signed Okay, Backstreet Boy next posters. question. Thanks. That Jordan. is a beautiful thing. <laughs> Let's slide right into the next oh, question. Oh, man. <laughs> oh. Oh, hey, oh. hey. Oh. Oh. Hey, yo. Oh. Hey, oh. Oh. Yeah. Security. <laughs> oh my god. Security. Where's security? <laughs> there are my children here. Oh. Oh god. Your kids left. They're hey, on my, my home. My daughter's gonna be like, what did you what am I? Ah, she's over there, like, oh god. <laughs> hey, um, uh, before I want to get to the whole jet thing. That, by the way, that's AJ, that's my daughter with AJ in his shoe closet right there. So go figure. Yes. Um, but uh, before I get to the jet, because that's I basically, you know, I think maybe I met you a couple of times before before the jet experience, but the jet is where I really got to know you guys. But you brought up Lou a couple of times, and of course the Boy Band Con movie is out right now. What, were you out of Lou's contract before the Jet or after the Jet? We were because out I, of it. We were out of it already, yeah. Thank God, right? Because I hear that thing yeah. was not well, that's, pretty. That's why what we wrote Black and Blue, or we titled the album after Black and Blue, you know, really was about Lou. About breaking free. Breaking free, yeah. And was he really written in as the sixth member in a way on the contract? Yep. Yeah. Yes. So yes. when we, we, um, there's, we've been asked about this a lot, <laughs> especially lately because uh, the, the because show. the other documentary came the the what's it called Boy Band the, Con the Con Band. came out, which I've seen and it's really good. He, uh, Lance did a great job with that, and AJ volunteered uh, from our group to speak kind of on our behalf in that film. But a little plug here: we have our own documentary called <laughs> <laughs> "Show Them What You're Made Of," which you can. Uh, you can see on Apple Music, and uh, <laughs> you can get it on Amazon, and, <laughs> where we extensively talk about Lou and each of our personal feelings about Lou. But yes, we were free of his contract by then, but just a quick synopsis of it. We ended up, the reason we separated from him was because we found out, and Brian was a catalyst in this, that he was uh, breaching his fiduciary duty as a manager. He was our manager. Then at the same time, he, was, uh, he owned a production company that we were assigned to. Um, so he was getting a, a management commission. We were recouping him all of his production expenses and costs. He was also a one-sixth member of the Backstreet Boys, so he made one-sixth of everything we made. Plus, he got a four-point override from the record label. That's 4% on every album that we sold. And... Uh, I'm missing one. I'm missing one. I'm missing one. What well, missing? when you add it all up, Kevin, he was taking 78% of our income. Oh, and he also owned the name. So, yeah, so he's taking... Let's just do uh, the math. So he was just basically being very greedy, right? And when the curtain was pulled back, he was like a father figure to all of us. When the curtain was pulled back and we saw, you know, it hurt our feelings. It broke our hearts. It was a rude awakening to, okay, this is a music business and we better get our ducks in a row. And so we all rallied together. Um, ironically, we were getting ready to, we were just finally breaking in the United States. Around 96, 97 is when this legal battle started happening. And we were on a promotional tour and we were touring at the same time. And he had threatened to do a cease and desist because he owned the name. 
So he's like, I'll take the name away from you because I own it. He locked all of our equipment up, our touring equipment, our guitars, our keyboards, our bands, our drums, all of our lighting rigs, our whole set for our tour. He locked it in a warehouse and said, I will keep this because technically I own it. So it was a tumultuous time in our lives, and we all bonded together and said, are we going to do this? Are we going to fight this? Are we going to make this happen? We're going to stand up, and we did, but we ended up reaching a settlement out of court because it, if we would have gone to court, it could have taken two years to three, who knows how long, and that would have taken, we may not have broken in the United States. We're just starting to break, so we didn't want to take the risk of being in court for three years, so we settled with him out of court, and so then we did the Millennium album. One of the a part of the a part of the settlement was that he was going to continue to it's make like some money. Thriller. Part of the settlement was he was going to continue to make some money from us moving forward for a, 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 a extended period of time and then de on a decreasing scale. But at a certain point, we all it made us sick knowing that he was still making money off of us. So then we reached another agreement where we all agreed to spend uh, our own money to buy him out <clears throat> forever so he would never be a part of our lives anymore. And that was right before the Black and Blue album dropped. That was wow. a long story, but that's the answer. And so it's a bittersweet Man. memory of him because without him, we would not have met, right? This is true. So we but you acknowledge also, that and appreciate that. But you also have to invest in what is. So it's and a bittersweet. At the, at the end of the day, I, I used to tell these guys all the time, like when you buy a ticket to the Backstreet Boys concert, there is no, there's no other name on there. Other Featuring Lou Perlman <laughs> was not on the ticket. <laughs> that does not exist, okay? And that's important that you bring that up because it doesn't exist. Because the hard work and effort of the traveling and being away, now when you, catap when you catapult us into the future and we're away from our families and we're... We're working hard. We bust our asses, JoJo. You know this, okay? Yep, and the fans, the fans know this. This is not easy. It's not an easy job. So, thank you, thank you for that round of applause. Arr, arr, arr. <laughs> no, but it's it's a uh, it's it's symbolic because you have to invest in anything that's successful. You have to invest in yourself, and we invested in us five as the bond, as the journey, as the accomplishment to push all the things aside and steer clear and see the same goal. And this is why we're here today. Unfortunately, we had amnesia because we forgot Baxter Boys is just a flea market. <laughs> and we should have just given the name back. And just started Damn, a new name. Damn, to be so, a lot like, less perfect. So that tied it, that put the button on it, D. Thanks, Good job, Howie. Howie. You're good at that. Oh, oh man, Howie, because that's amnesia. how you do it. I know, that's yeah. how you do it. That's how he does yeah. it. Yeah. That's how you do it. I'll be opening up with my comedy act after this words. That's a that's a Justin cents. Timberlake song. And Amnesia. Sorry. Ooh, just wrote a song. And that's why there's no Lou Pearlman tribute at the Grammy Museum Backstreet right. Experience. So in case you were curious, that's why. That's why we're here. By the way, he actually, back in the day, he approached me. He wanted to bring uh, Top of the Pops, the UK show. He wanted to bring that to the US. And I was talking to him about hosting that. So I flew wow. to Vegas with Lou Pearlman once. And he was big dinner and money was flying everywhere. Then I realized that, man, this is that, this is, I've heard the stories. And Luckily, it didn't progress past that. But I, you know, I've heard these stories thinking, what if I would have signed something? And what if that would have, you know? You know, what's interesting is you think about that, you know, life in that way. But then when you look at where you're at right now and then where we are right now, 26 years later, and all of our fans out here, I mean, you know, things happen for a reason, True. you know, and we're here and we're just, we're just grateful to be here. That's all I can say. I mean, that's good point. To think. All right. On to where I first met these guys. Speaking of, the Black and Blue album, The Jet. We need to, have, we need to hear some Jet stories because this, describe for people who don't know this story, and I'm sure everybody does, but perhaps somebody watching maybe, perhaps hasn't heard the story, that, which by the way, I should point out, Howie told me um, a couple of months back, uh, he said, since you're the sixth Backstreet Boy, JoJo, you need to chip in on this jet because it's so expensive. You're still paying still for it. Recouped. <laughs> <laughs> Walk me through this jet, the whole thing, and kind of tell a little overview of just the, the chaos and beauty and the madness of this this experience. Well, well this we is, wanted. Oh, go, go. No, you yeah. go. I talked extensively go, go, already. Go. go. Uh, this was out actually. What was it? Two thousand one when this yeah. album came out. Um, this is like literally at the height of our career after Millennium album. So. For us at that time, and every artist, I think, around that time, it was always like, okay, what can we do next, you know, for the stage productions, for recording of records, for promoting a record? 
And so us, along with our management, had this crazy idea to do 100 hours around the world and uh, hit six continents. And we decided to take some fans. Uh, actually, no, was there a fan? No, it was wild. press. Press and media with us and did the different continents. And uh, we were lucky to have you with us. And uh, but it was it was a crazy idea. We actually, I think, if I'm not mistaken, the plane was like a Sultan of uh, I don't know if it was Brunei or Brunei. somebody's plane. Sultan somebody's Brunei. plane, and um, it actually had green on it. But they they did a little backstreet like overlay on the, the like on the side of the. They plane. wrapped it. Yeah, we they, wrapped the 737. Yes. <laughs> back That's in right, 2000. Did. Yes. <laughs> we also had two ex Air Force One pilots, which was pretty cool. Um, I recall sitting in the cockpit, and he was telling us the story. I said, what's the craziest thing you've had to experience as a pilot? And I think he said when he was shot down over Vietnam, uh, something like oh, that. Man. I don't know, what, I don't know the, how that story, clearly he made it. Are you sure that it wasn't I'll, when he let me fly the plane? Which, which he I'm did. getting to, because I, we're sitting there at one point, it's and we hear, idea. this is your Captain AJ speaking, and something, something, something. And I thought, there's no way he's going to fly this plane. Because, after 10 shots. Yeah, after... <laughs> Which I know uh, yeah, we should get to that quite too. Quite a few shots of Jack Daniels. But the uh, the plane, the, we're in the plane. And you, you hear the you feel the plane go. And I'm like, <laughs> and I'm not the best flyer. I'm okay, but when it went, huh, I'm, I'm, oh my god, he's really flying this plane. Oh my god. <laughs> so there's that. Then of course, back in the wild days, AJ had this crazy drinking story where he held his hands behind his back. If you want to know the behind the scenes, behind the scenes. Yes. And I don't know what that game was, but it, it didn't end up well for me. I it made a, it up basically. You would hold up. Whatever, uh, like, <laughs> denomination, like, oh, I have five, and you would guess if you got it wrong, however many that you got wrong is how many seconds that you had to shoot out of the bottle of Jack. Now, yeah. you could do it the nice way and go one, two, three, or you can do one, <laughs> two. <laughs> Needless to say, within, like, 15 minutes, JoJo and I were about five sheets to the wind. I just... Uh, 30,000 uh, feet uh, up. Flying on a plane, we're swaying anyway. But. This is what I, rem I remember about the plane. I remember... <laughs> I remember there being the biggest bed in the back. I mean, this thing was huge. No, it was one bed, and I, I think we were like kind of like sharing and stuff. We were all sleeping next to each other. But I remember a, <laughs> all five of us. There's I a photo so, of you four was, in there asleep. We were. And I took the picture. We were. But I was. We were so into this like like this plane trip. I was like trying to make it. Like every time we would land. <laughs> We, we, we landed in, uh, in, in Africa. I was playing Toto's Africa as we were coming in. Dun, 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 I, I put the music dun, 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 on. Then we took off. And, Australia? And then, then you Australia, played I was work? like, land down under. I was coming down with the friggin'. <laughs> it's true. And every time we would land, I would play a different theme song. I, I do have to say, I kind of feel bad looking back because we had these amazing like gourmet chefs that could make like amazing food. And yet there'd be one table that would have like steaks and fish and really nice salads. And then the other side was just... McDonald's cheeseburgers laid out, <laughs> double cheeseburgers, chicken nuggets, whatever. That was clearly my table. We were really oh, jet lagged. <laughs> that was a that was a great time. At the end Thank of you. the uh, the whole thing, I recall. You know when you um if you take a a cruise or whatever, and when you get back on ground, you feel like you, f you feel like you're swaying a bit. Oh yeah. I think but true. I think I bumped into Howie, and and you could. It was more than a feeling. You could see me swaying. <laughs> And I was like, dude, are you having the same? He's More like, yeah. Oh, yeah. It was strange. Jet lag for a week after. Because on that sure. whole trip, we were in the air more than we were on the ground yep. for How the whole trip that? around the world. <laughs> True. But it was really cool that, you know, an idea that the five of us had with our management, we took it to the record label. They thought it was crazy, but we did something that had never been done before. And it was a great way to promote our album, which... Millennium was the first album that was released at the same time all over the world, wasn't it? Or was it Black and Blue? I think it was Millennium. It was Millennium. Okay. Millennium. But finally, we, had, we could release albums at the same time all around the world. And that was a, a heck of a way to do it. We began the journey in Stockholm, Sweden with the MTV Europe uh, Music Awards. And then after that, we went to Tokyo, I believe. Yep. And then yes. from Tokyo to, Tokyo to Perth. 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 Perth to Cape Town. To Cape no, Town. or Rio. No, 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 Cape Town. Tokyo. Cape Town, Tokyo, listen, uh, <clears throat> Stockholm, Sweden, I got it. Stockholm, Sweden, to, uh, to Tokyo. Yep. Tokyo to Perth. Uh, to Perth. No, no. We no, went no, you to, went, to, we went to Bondi Beach. We were in Sydney. You went to Sydney first and yes. refueled in Perth. That's yes, right. we refueled. Yep. Uh, were you there? JoJo, yes. JoJo, take it. You Please got that. Take it from here. You're in the same backseat, boy. You're allowed JoJo to talk. JoJo probably remembers <laughs> from here. You know what? You know what's amazing about this is that we would pick up local radio and, and DJs take them to the next and country. take them to the next city and then like check their butts commercial back. Yep. 
right? So they were like, wow, this is amazing. They was like, if everyone's boarding, please board. You know, then yep. you're like checking your stuff. He got to ride the whole way. The whole, it was a blast though. All the way back <laughs> to New York City. It was crazy. I recall like normally the, in the planes they say, put your tray tables up and this and that. Man, it, we were in like one wheel on and one wheel off and everybody was like, it was madness. It's oh, always like, like, we were like, like, up, was like one time we, we took off and I just hip. stood up and I was like this. <laughs> <laughs> Nick <laughs> and somersaults down the aisle way. I was. Oh, we dude. weren't even strapped in. <laughs> no. What's up? Oh, man. Oh, those seat were the good old days, you know. We're still paying for that plane right I'll now. We still are. I'll get you a check out, yeah. We hey, had uh, to refinance our homes recently just to pay the recoupment on that. To wrap the whole plane up, Black and Blue, man, it was worth it. That album was... Something else, was it not? Thank you. What, uh, what, I guess, any, any final comments on Black and Blue before I mo move on to other chaos? Because I, show me the meaning. Hmm. Oh, man. Can, can I say something real fast? Please. Sure, go for it. And I'll, and I'll keep it statistics because I'm a numbers guy. Okay, so uh, we came out with Millennium. It was 1.1229 million copies the first week. Okay, Garth Brooks says he did it the first week, but he sold a double CD and he sold half a million copies. Okay. Got it. Okay. This is clinical music knowledge. Okay. Okay. Then. Okay. Okay. So. Okay. So. Okay. This, <laughs> so, this group called the Backstreet Boys came out with Millennium. We sold 1.129 million copies the first week. Okay. Which a lot of you guys bought. I bought like 16,000 copies probably. <laughs> Maybe more. So then we fast forward to uh, No Strings Attached. This. CD that came out. Hey, come on now. Be nice. This is, listen, so no strings attached. Hey, so by the way, the, the whole, real quick, the, uh, the whole theory or the whole concept of Backstreet versus NSYNC, you guys were all mad at. I went to Howie's birthday party and half of NSYNC was there. So yeah. it wasn't like, there's yeah, no, that's, no, not a, that's never been true. I graduated with Chris Kirkpatrick. Yeah, we, were, we were in college Because together. there's no strings attached. Oh, I'm oh, sorry, you. go ahead, Brian. So no strings attached comes out and sells like 2.4, 2.2. Yep. Breaks like the that. record. They, yep. they double, they double. They're like, hey, hey. <laughs> and I'm like, okay. So when Black and Blue came out, that's when the philosophy of if you can sell a record, let's sell a record. Okay? So it became a worldwide thing. So there are statistic numbers anywhere from the first week from 5.5 to 7 million copies that first week for Black and Blue. Just saying. <laughs> Sorry. Wow. <laughs> Next question. Thanks, Brian. <laughs> Those oh were the good old days. That was great. <laughs> oh, my God. We're still God. paying for it, like Howie said. Yeah. Mortgage. You know what, though? A lot of strings attached. If you really are still paying for it, that, wow, that's, that must have been some expensive plane. It was $2 million. Is, dollars. How much? Two, two million dollars. Oh, that was I one day was for the blue sales, right? <laughs> Those yeah, two? Yeah. That's still a pretty damn expensive plane. I need a couple of, uh, a couple of, I love the, the stories they've told me over the years, and one of the things that stuck in my head are these, uh, Backstreet Boys noticeable on stage mistakes. <laughs> oh man, there's a whole lot of those. Oh boy, did someone just say Howie? <laughs> Who? Well, said we can Howie. we can start with Howie. Howie, I'm, do I have till we have until 8:50? Is that my cutoff point? 8:50? Oh, we have to stop right now. No, actually. no, we don't. No, 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 no. Howie, no. It's 8:50. Uh, I just want to make sure I time everything out right here. But what's the story? You're, this is from the recent Vegas run where you you oh, cracked your your leg. What's that story? You. Ah, yes. Oh, yeah. That uh, was behind the stage, though. Yeah, that was backstage. Oh, that's true. Yeah, it's behind the stage, but still, yeah. Yeah, I, I actually, uh, we had this little quick change <laughs> right before the very end of the show, thank God. It was the last number. Um, and uh, I just, I thought I had a little bit more time. I saw Kevin taking his time, you know, getting dressed and everything. And for some reason, next thing I turned around, and he was out the door, out the little <laughs> dressing tent. And I was like, oh, sh. I'm like, I ran out, and I literally, unfortunately, bumped into our uh, wardrobe stylist, Tierney, who's out there helping us in our skivvies, put on our clothes and everything. And um, I actually tripped over her and fell into the back of this metal, I guess you would you call it grig, or the, just the metal surrounding of the outer stage on this uh, steps thing. And it punctured a hole in my kneecap. <laughs> and um, luckily I caught my hand right in front of this metal bar, right, but I, my knee definitely got the, the best of it. And uh, I ran up on stage, and we were, actually it was, uh, it was, um, before we did Don't Go Breaking My Heart, we, that one set there, wherever we used to do that, that uh, um, the steps there. I ran up, literally to say a long story short, I'm, I remember just doing I Want It That Too Way late. as we're closer to the, the edge of everybody. And I'm like, blood is just dripping off my finger and my leg and stuff like that. And I remember girls going, ah! I was like, you know, I'm like, <laughs> I'm trying to <laughs> sing to them. 
Baby, don't More go. scared of me. I didn't. He said, yeah. I got mixed emotions. <laughs> <laughs> but you have, to, you have to understand, it's Howie. Like, and you look over at him, and his eyes are gla glassy and glossy. <laughs> and he's not even looking at you. He's like, looking he's through looking you. looking right through you. And you're like, whoa, something's really wrong. <laughs> pure adrenaline. Pure oh adrenaline. Oh, my gosh. All right. I, I, I don't know if I heard the full story, but Kevin, you told me about the time that. Uh, you were you're in the what do they call the riser at the beginning of the show, or maybe it wasn't the the Vegas show, but it was some, one of your tours. And I guess you guys in these giant risers, and Kevin, you get stuck in one, right? What's that story? Because I know you were really so, mad when you're stuck up there. No, no, wait. Well, you're getting a couple of stories mixed up, AJ. But <laughs> the 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 lifts. So oh, do you yeah. remember our first tour yes. when was it Mike Morin was our tour yes, manager? I, yes. And. We didn't have the budget to go to a professional stage company and have our set built. So we got some welders and some counterweights, <laughs> and we were trying market. to have lifts <laughs> in the stage, right? What could well, they could go never wrong? get mine right with the counterweights. So we all raise up. If you, so the concert in Orlando where there's a lot of silver in the trussing and there's a silver BSB on the stage, there's a DVD or VHS of it. That's the tour. But we came up. So I'll use, I'll use my chair as a prop. We all came up, and everybody came up above, and their feet came up to here. I came up to here and stopped. And so I had to crawl out of the lift to get up on stage. It was, embar it was embarrassing. And then on the Millennium Tour here at the Forum, you know, we flew in the opening. We rose up and we flew and landed on the stage. And then during quit playing games, yes, quit. we harnessed True. up and flew out over the audience. Yep. I got stuck over the audience for two songs, just hanging there. <laughs> dude, we are, dude, so we're under the stage doing a quick change. And I'm looking around I'm like, Where is, where's, where's Kevin? Kevin? And you can where's look Kevin? through the crevice and he just... Hold on. Hey guys, how you doing? But this this was a trend. Just, we're in LA, doing. right? This Everybody in LA is jaded. They see all the shows. I'm like, oh, I can't believe we're in Los Angeles. I'm just dangling over everybody. I'm so mad right now. But didn't you get stuck in the Raptors at the award show as well? Oh yes. yeah, and the American Music the American Awards. American Music Awards. The American Music Awards, me, was you it me? Just, was it should, the three of us that came yes, out of the ceiling? We, yes, because we jumped over something. We're coming out of the ceiling, we do this. Film this video of the fans chasing us, and Wasn't then we're that supposed billboard? to. And then we, was it billboard? Or no, it, 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 no, it was the American Music Awards. Uh, yep. We come down out of the ceiling, and I come down slower than everybody else. AJ and Nick get to the deck, and they pop out of the things. Their things come right off, and they start doing the choreography with all the dancers. And I'm stuck, dangling about. You know, I'm almost to the stage. I just can't get there. And then I finally get down, and I, I can't get my harness off. And what's weird is my wife danced in that performance with us. Uh, yep. But I got to my mark late, and he was yeah, a little pissed. I was so mad. Just a little. <laughs> <laughs> right Why do I love that so television. much? Well, like another, just really quickly, another story about Kevin. The funny thing oh, is, God. well, but this happened to all of us, which is kind of consistent. So the Vegas residency, I don't know if you guys have seen the Vegas residency. So we had, we had one show where Vegas, where Kevin, sorry, Vegas, Kevin is on, Kevin is on stage left in the box that comes out. And it's like, boy, you know, we come out and it's lights and lights up. So we get up to the top of these boxes and we're all in these boxes and we're about to be revealed. Well, the production just shuts down. We lose power and we stop and we're stuck up top. Hanging, so dangling. Kevin, Kevin is on stage left, far away, with nobody in front of him. I'm in the center, in front of Howie. So it goes Kevin, Howie, me, AJ, Nick. No, yeah, Nick, right. AJ, Nick. That's right. Yeah, yeah got it right. Yeah. So, sorry, I forgot the show. I was working on DNA. So, so Kevin is the only one that can see just like the side of the stage. So he can't see anybody behind him. So he thinks he's the only one. <laughs> And you'd had enough at this point. You're oh, like, yeah. Oh, he was, I he wish was we like, could have seen his face. You know he was just like. Well, and our production manager, I can see our production manager in the wings, and I'm like. <laughs> it was so awesome. Yeah, like, was, for real. I was mad. But uh, luckily, it was all of us that yeah. time. Oh, man. Well, they've all had something happen. I won't even get to the AJ ripping his pants story, if you know what I'm saying. But no, but I did recently fall through the stage Whoa. in Las Vegas. AJ what? And I are the yeah, yeah. It yeah, was our 50th show, 
And normally I don't break choreography. I don't. Like I'll I'll do freestyle, but then I I, I will always come back to hit my mark. And this night I, I broke choreography in a big way, which I will never do again. Lesson learned. And it was right before we did We Got It Going On. And all female dancers rise up. And then I didn't know that those lifts go back down. And they stay open. So I run up to mess with our dancer, Brooke. And I hear the music. So I, I'm like, I better hit my mark. Floor is gone. 12 feet straight down. Bounced off the riser onto the cement. I don't remember anything. But I felt so bad afterwards because Brooke saw me just laying there. <laughs> Classy, I didn't say a word, and she's crying. She's like, oh, my God, he's dead. He's dead. So I try to get up, and my butt is in the most excruciating pain, and I'm like, I can't put pressure on it. Meanwhile, I can hear Nick going, where's AJ? I'm like, don't sing my part. Yeah, we're like, we're out there on the stage. And we're Nick like, had to sing my rap. And AJ's sings my verse part. is coming up. We're we like, no idea where he went. He where is he? It's moments like this that... I will forever appreciate being in a group because God forbid one of us goes down, we got four guys to back us up and we can all do it. We all know each other's parts, harmonies, lyrics. So yeah, wow. I still got something floating around here. I don't know what it is. Oh my but God. But man, yeah. It's got a bone chip in his hip. Yeah, it's definitely not fun. It's called not a fun. disc. It's not I, fun. I guess it was worth it because uh, to my understanding, it was the fastest Vegas selling residency ever. Yes. So That's what we were told, yes. Oh man. How much time? Are we going once again until 8.50? Is that my time? Yeah, I wanna, yeah. Okay, good. All right. We've so got so I'm gonna, many more yeah, minutes. I'm stopping at 8.33. There we go. Okay. Uh, sorry about that. Hey, uh, man, you're, you're, how, how did you meet your wives? Your wives, they're, they're the lucky ones, clearly, because how they got stuck with you knuckleheads, I don't know. But uh, <laughs> how does one go about meeting and marrying a Backstreet Boy? Hmm. Wow, nobody wants to. I'll, I'll go first. Um, <laughs> I, met, I met my wife. Uh, We've been together now for 10 years, married for seven. Yeah. Um, she, she definitely deserves that with me. Um, no, like, so she was a bartender waitress at, if anyone that lives here locally knows a place called Saddle Ranch. Uh, really good food, by the way. Uh, and so I asked her out. I went in one day with, with, with a couple of my friends. I asked her out. She said, okay, we'll do dinner and a movie. Um, she claims she did not know who I was. Uh, apparently, right. she was more of an in sync fan. Oh, she bye, liked them bye, better. Bye, she bye, liked bye. them better as dancers. She said, not as singers. Then, once she found out who I was, when we spoke on the phone later that day, I said, "Okay, you know what? I had a long night in the studio. How about we just do dinner and you can just just come by my house and we can watch like, a, you know, movie, whatever." Honest like to God, to honest to God, I just yeah. wanted to watch a movie. She made up some cockamamie story, ended up dissing me. She never showed up. Uh, cut to about a year later. I see her again. I ask her out again. I'm like, remember last time I asked you out, this whole thing just kind of fell apart, and I ended up dating some crazy person in between? So, yeah, I did. So I asked her out again, and she said, okay. And literally, March 22nd, 2009 was our very first date. It was the best, worst first date ever. Uh, we went to a Mexican restaurant called Camacho's, uh, where the mariachi band can play the entire evening. So it was like, <laughs> what's your favorite food? I'll, I'll take care of the bill. Thank you. And then we went and saw this atrocious horror movie, which was insanely graphic. But I walked her back to her car, gave her a kiss on the cheek, and something just happened. I don't know. It just, it just felt different. And for months, we just dated, and we, you know, we just had fun, never went to that next level. And I'm like, oh, my God, did I lose my flair? Did I lose my, <laughs> what's going on with me? And then I, I talked to my mom, and she's like, no, honey, that's love. And I was like, oh, really? So sure enough, she was right. And now because of go. that, I have two beautiful girls and the most amazing wife in the world. How about that? Amazing. Who wants to jump in? Give me some here, guys. Why do you have to hog the whole question? Do you hear how long that was? <laughs> I was just explaining. Question for each of us, which we got. Yeah, we got enough time to you answer got plenty this of question. <laughs> <laughs> go for it, Kev. No, you go, man. I'll go. <laughs> I go. Nick's like, give me that time. Like, Let's get it over with. I go. No, no, I'll make it uh, a long story short. Dur, shorter. For real. Uh, <laughs> uh, I uh, actually, um, my sister Angel. 
um, before I met my wife, about a couple years before I met her, she was friends with my wife, Lauren, um, at the time. And she kept telling me, she kept telling me, you, I really want you to meet this girl. Like, I, I really think that she's like perfect for you. She plays video games. She loves, <laughs> she loves rock music, you know, and all this stuff. And, and we just kind of like never met each other. And then um, one, uh, one time, my, uh, my bro we, I moved back to uh, LA from uh, Franklin, from uh, Nashville. And uh, uh, my brother was with me, and he's like, Let, hey, I, I got this girl I want to hang out with, uh, and, and, um, and she, she's got a friend that wants to come over, too. And uh, you know, just, just do me a favor. Just be my wingman, okay? Just be my wingman, okay? And, and I'm, like, I'm like, all right, all right. And then so he brings this girl over, and we hang out for a little bit. And, uh, and then I meet my, my, at the time, Lauren, uh, who's now my wife. And I just remember um, just, like, being, like, like wanting to put my arm around her and just wanting to be really, really close to her. And, and we sat there, and we were like watching movies. We watched uh, the movie Big for the first time. We were watching it together. And we went out, we went out uh, on, this, on my balcony at the time, and I looked up in the sky, and I saw, like, we were just looking at each other, and I saw these like shooting stars go in the sky. And I looked at her, oh, yeah. and then we both looked at each other, and I'm like, this is it. This is like, I think this is it. And then I never wanted to leave her side ever since that moment, and I, I was in love with her ever since. Wow. And now, now, she is like everything to me, and uh, I have a beautiful baby boy who's about to turn uh, three April 19th. Uh, and uh, so I'm just, I'm so in love still to this day. Still to this day. Nice, nice. Anybody else want to jump in? By the way, when are we, when are we going to get a, a Backstreet Boys offspring supergroup? Is that ever going to, because you got a superstar in the making he's, here. He's going solo. He's I, solo. solo. <laughs> Man, no doubt. We, me and Brian were talking about his son. You guys want to jump in on that, or should I just move on to another one? I, no, I, I, mean, I want you to talk about the, your love there, Kev. Uh, I went on the first date with my wife a year before I went on my first date with these guys. Oh, nice. So I, uh, I have 27 years, my wife and I. She's seen all the ups and downs. She's seen everything. Seen it all. Yeah, so... Yeah, it's, it's a long, amazing, beautiful story. We worked together at Disney in Orlando, Florida. She was a dancer in yeah. like Beauty and the Beast. Everybody knows this. I was a Ninja Turtle. <laughs> you, sh you're, you still are. Is that the one, the story? I bumped into a, <laughs> I bumped into a Kevin and his family on, a, on, a, on the jet coming back from Vegas at one time. And you were telling me and my wife and my daughter Sophie about the story. Where this, you, you were in some outfit, whatever it was. Maybe it was a Ninja Turtle outfit. And this kid kept bugging you. What's that story real quick? Where yeah, I was, I I was Leonardo at, at Disney MGM Studios in Orlando. We'd come out and we'd do a little martial arts dance show. And then we'd sign autographs and take pictures for a half an hour. That, those were my first meet and greets. And so um, <laughs> this one day it had rained. So we had to go inside uh, the theater where they actually did the Mickey Mouse Club. And inside that theater in the lobby, we were doing a meet and greet and taking photos. And this little kid, this little English kid, was like grabbing the back of my shell. And he was like, Leonardo, Leonardo, can I have a photograph, Leonardo? And so I got down on a knee and signed his little book and took a picture with him. And then I'm doing other people. And then it's like, Leonardo, Leonardo. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's like, Leonardo, Leonardo. And I'm like, yeah. And then he did, and you know, this is going on for like 10 minutes. And then finally, I just leaned over and put my mouth like right on his head. And you weren't allowed to speak. As a Disney employee, if you're a character, you're not allowed to speak. It's very strict rules. And I just went, <coughs> wait, wait. I mean, <laughs> like that right over his head. And he's like, <laughs> oh, yeah. And he, and he left me alone after that. So. That kid's traumatized for the rest of his life. <laughs> he is traumatized. He's, He's been in therapy for 30 years. Turtle now. again, man. <laughs> oh my God, Howie, let me go to you real quick. Uh, Brian, you wanna go? Go for it, Howie. How do you top well, that cool. last story? <laughs> All right. Well, let's just cut to the chase. I technically hired my wife. <laughs> along, along with these four other guys. It's true. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> Along with uh, these four other guys. Um, <laughs> Howie. We all hired Howie. Howie. You and I hired her. Actually, Kevin We I, interviewed her. That's right. We did. And I get the it's best It's only part. getting weirder, um, dude. <laughs> this is, I think, actually, we had just done the Billboard Awards. 
uh, back in what 2000. Wait, he just said he <laughs> hired his wife. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of oh, it it's true. Well, I did. It'll, it'll make sense okay. here in a second. <laughs> Leonardo. <laughs> 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 Anyways, who got hot in here? Okay. She would, was so, she the nanny of the kid going like, yeah, no. <laughs> So anyway, so we just did the Billboard Awards. I think it was like 2000. And the next day we were all in L.A. And we had a slew of meetings that our management had. It was picking out stuff for like the next tour, merchandise. It was like a long, like probably a good five, six hours. And so at the very end they said, we just got one more thing that we'd like you guys to do. Is anybody willing to volunteer to stay back to uh, interview this person we want to do for this website kind of idea? And so Kevin and I were willing to do it. And website content on tour, website content, someone to upload it, do it, do totally. all the content. Yeah. And at that time, actually, I think none of us even knew exactly what the Harley the Internet, Internet was. Internet was a new thing. It was, and we were actually, our management came up with us. We were pioneering uh, this, like, besides having just a, a website, we wanted to create something like a VIP experience for our fans. And so they said, we have this girl that, went out that uh, we'd like you guys to interview. And I just remember Kevin and I being there, and I'm like looking at her and going, I'm so exhausted. I'm so hungover. And I'm like, but man, she's pretty, but I'm so tired. And I'm like, she's good. She's cool. Whatever. And uh, next to know, I wasn't looking for anything serious. Uh, neither was she. And then at the time, she came out on the road with us. And around, I just remember around that time, most of the guys were all like in relationships. And, you know, on the days off, a lot of them were like, you know, on either playing Nintendo, Nick was doing, or, or the other guys were like calling their girlfriends. And so I was the one that was always like, shit, let's go out to Hang Glide in, in Rio and on the Copacabana Beach and let's go to the pyramids and just do fun, cool, you know, like exploratory type stuff. And so needless to say, the website was basically a Howie D website for a whole year there. <laughs> 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 he was the only one doing content. Yeah. <laughs> 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 So I was her boss. Now she's oh. my boss, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> Things have switched. Okay, I'll make a hunt here all of a sudden. That's where it began. I can see fans walking on like, are there any other members in this group? I, said, huh? I guess not. Uh, I'll make mine quick. 15th of June, we were, uh, we were cutting. We were actually, we showed up on the video shoot. Uh, it was 4.15 a.m. West Coast time. <laughs> okay? I'm a numbers guy, I'll tell you. So... 4.15 a.m., we show up, we're getting, we're dressed, makeup for a, a shoot called the As Long As You Love Me video shoot. It was the 15th of June, 1997. Um, this, I'm in the white van in the back because we're all, like, we're just all asleep. It's like 3.30 in the morning. We got picked up from the hotel, and we're all ass out in, this, in the van sleeping, and I look back, and there's all these headshots of these girls that are going to be in the video. So I get to the sixth and final headshot, and it says Leanne Wallace. And I was like, wow, I have to remember that name. She's dressed, it's a black and white photo, I'll never forget it. She's dressed in white with jeans, and she's leaning up against a brick wall. And I was like, that looks like my kind of girl. <laughs> so, so we fast forward to about 9.45 in the morning. <laughs> We fast forward to 9.45 in the morning, and she's not there. She's late. Uh, we're in makeup. We've been shooting all day. It seems like all day. It's morning. She shows up in these khaki pants and white, uh, black tank top. And she's like, hi, my name's Leanne. And I said, I know. <laughs> and so, yes, the rest is history. She's the most amazing woman I know, and it's been 23 years. So, wow. So technically... We all hired Brian's wife as well. For him. <laughs> yeah, we all we all Man. hired Brian's that's wife. Sure. Yeah. Yes, we did. Thanks, guys. We, Appreciate we that. That's crazy. We, we went out. I got a I got a fan question. They you know you know face ID. There we go. All right, uh, real quick. One fan question that I want to work in. Uh, crazy underscore loca says. <laughs> what a great name. Yeah. She fan. says, "What would the what would the 1993 Backstreet Boys think of all you've accomplished in the last 26 years?" What would the night? Would they even believe? That's a really hard one. Like hashtag. Kind of what? Bless you, AJ. Uh, thank you. Sorry. <laughs> what? I mean, yeah, they would be over the moon. I, I would, would be over the moon if I knew all this was going to happen. Yeah, I would. I would hope that we'd be proud of ourselves for standing the test of time and kind of going through all the ups and downs and goods and bads and the bumpy roads that we've been through. But yet here we are, almost. 
26 years later together still. So, yeah, I it's mean, been crazy, man. Yeah, just st it stick, is crazy. sticking through it, you know, that's the hardest thing. 26 years is a long time. I mean, and so many things can happen. And uh, it, it's easy, really easy for a group to just disband. It's extremely hard to stay, stay together. And so I, I think that, wow, that was incredible that what we've been able to do. No doubt. So. No this, doubt. Yeah. This, this is also, as we talk about our marriages and our wives, this is harder than a marriage, I will tell you that. Mer very much harder than a marriage. He ain't lying. I, you, you Hallelujah. Know. Hallelujah. I can imagine. And it's our first marriage. And yeah. Amongst, I mean, and there's honest, five of you yeah. as opposed to just one. Just, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Have, I mean, have you ever been married to four dudes? I, I mean, have not. Seriously. It is on my bucket Life's list, but uh, I haven't done that yet. <laughs> yeah. Hey, yeah, um, you should try it sometime. <laughs> yeah. Get a prenup. Um, now, here we are. We're sitting at the uh, Grammy Museum. I mean, did you, well, when you first started, there was no Grammy Museum. Now, here we are with your own exhibit in the Grammy Museum. I mean, yeah. You're, I mean, you've, you've looked around. You've checked it out. What's your take on it? You know, it's got to be pretty darn surreal, exciting, insert the word, whatever, but it's wild, you know? When we walked in there earlier, it was just like, because we've been in tour rehearsals, getting ready for the DNA tours, so we've been, like, trying to call home, talk to our families, or while we're home, try to compile whatever we have in storage or that we've saved from past tours, whether it's magazines or it's wardrobe or it's, you know, photos, videos, whatever, and... To see the final product is pretty insane. Like, um, you know, have you guys seen it yet? Okay. Oh, they have. So, oh, so like for me, me, for me, the coolest part, like wardrobe wise, we were in rehearsals here in LA for the tour, and we're like opening these boxes, pulling out all this stuff, and these five shirts are in like exquisite condition, which is shocking, since we shot the video almost 30 years ago, and they were dry. They were wet in the video. Um, and it was just crazy. I'm like, Nick is like, dude, these are from All I Have to Give. I'm I like, thought no, they no, were. No. I'm like, dude. But they were in such good condition. I know. I'm like, dude, yeah, was I was no wearing way. yellow in All I Have to Give. I'm like, mark my words, these are the Quit Playing Game shirts. He did shirts. call that. And but I that's... pulled it up on YouTube, and I was but right. You, you have to understand how old those shirts are. I mean, yeah. I mean, they're all in pastel. They're really ugly. But the, but the pastel skittles. But but how yes. I mean like quit playing games. When did we shoot? That was in the very beginning when that we first shot that old as video. dirt, man. Yeah. That was old I mean, as dirt. What we year shot was it? Ninety six. Ninety six. Ninety six. Like eighty four. We found them. Where were yeah? Where were they at once again? Where were they in storage at? We I can't mean, who tell you sure. because it's at it's our rehearsal warehouse. It's a secret you. location. Oh, it's like secret location kind of like, in the yeah. valley. It's like the Bat Cave. Well, but it's not. So but it they were in a box. Yeah. yeah. And you, was it sort of like, did you know you were, did, like, I, did somebody go through looking for them? It was sort of like, oh no, my God, we look just at what accident. It, it was wild. Yeah. 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 Nick and I were just going through stuff. Like, we, we saw the surfboard from the Millennium Tour. We saw Nick and I's old custom helmets from that tour. We saw belts from, because there was two different opening outfits from the Millennium. There was the blade-looking intro with the buckles, and then we upped the ante and went to more of the Batman with latex. the nipples and the latex and the abs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You remember yeah, the Batman it. and Robin? Yeah. Like when it when Batman first came out, it was was it Clooney and uh, Clooney had the nipples, which was just that and what's his name? So the Chris same O'Donnell. company that made that the <laughs> yes. same it was really cool. The same company that made those suits. We went and they put us in like these paper mache body casts, and we had to stand oh, there. <laughs> and they Sucked. took molds of our body. Well, guess what? Nick didn't show up. So he had to use my mold, <laughs> and our shoulders are completely different. It never different. fit, dude. It never fit it him. Never so fit. if you look at Nick, because I my 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 traps slope down like this, and Nick is more squared <laughs> off. So it was always Nick. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> I forgot about that. So anyway, wow. that's where the the latex body I hated my suit came from. On I the second, it. we did I two legs got more of the abs. Yeah, yeah. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> Oh That's my good God! Stuff, man. Hey, do you guys? Uh, we're, I know we're running running over time here, but I'll, I'll make this quick. I just I don't want to stop, but I guess we kind of have to. But uh, I got I have to know that um, w as this exhibit goes on for however long it goes here, do you guys plan to, if you have time, to low key surprise a few a few people like just hey, let's go surprise people at the Backstreet exhibit? I would love to, but I really want to bring my girls to see this because this is our this is Daddy's and their uncle's history. Like this is our journey. Like. They've seen videos on YouTube and this, that, and the other, but like 
to see something that's tangible, to see the wardrobe, to see yeah. to see the little thing that I was wrapped in leaving the hospital when I was born, which I never saw till today. Thanks, mom. Forty one years old, Jesus. But like, you know, to like show Brian's high school diploma, his college, di- like all this, all Yay. these cool things, man. That's like, this is what Daddy does. That'd be so cool to show my kids. And you need to get back on your daughter's good side, right? Because uh, yes, I do. Because if yeah, I was telling Jojo earlier, <laughs> since Daddy and Ava's and Lyric's uncles have been very, very busy lately. About four or five days ago, uh, my wife sent me a text from Ava to tell Daddy to stop being a Backstreet Boy and just be my dad. She's no. six. I mean, come on. That's some that hurts. <laughs> guilt right there. It's still there. It's still there. She loves you. I know. And when you, when you bring her here, she'll be like, oh, that's my dad. That's my dad. But that's my it's pop. A, I just want to say that it's an well, honor for us to, to have this exhibit here, and we want to thank the Grammy Museum thank for, you, Grammy. for thank this you. honor and, and all the curators and our management, everybody in our team that help, thank helped you guys us crowd surf. Thank you guys. track all this stuff down and, and put it together. Thank you guys so much. We hope you all have enjoyed looking at it, and uh, yeah. Thank you for being here because you truly have grown up with us as well, so thank you. Thank you, guys. Yes. Thank, thank you very Joe. much. Love it. Jojo N. Oh Listen, man, it's my honor to be a. Uh, can I a, just say something real fast? Yes, sir. You know, there's, there's, you know, when we started this journey 26 years ago, we had hoped to be a success. Okay, there's a young lady named Taylor Swift who has a, a same thing Grammy exhibit, and it's been traveling the world for about two, two and a half years now. So we would like to take our fans on a journey. So hopefully, maybe it won't end in September this year. Maybe it will continue on to. The world, because I think the world needs to see it. So. I would agree. I'm sure they got, you know, oh, a few yeah. secret plans. You know, a little, <laughs> a little this, a little that. Man, it's been a, it's been a lot of fun with you guys. And uh, I guess my final question, we'll keep it kind of short because I'm already three minutes over. Bad JoJo. But uh, what's next for Backstreet Boys? This is not the end. This is the beginning in a lot of ways. You know? Yeah. Well, I mean, world tour. We are doing Kimmel tomorrow night. We have Kimmel. Then we go to yeah. Vegas. We go to we, Vegas to put the button on the our amazing on Vegas residency, and then what happens? Well, we're um, actually going to be working on a Christmas album this year. Finally! <laughs> really? That's, yes. We've never done a Christmas album. Have We've you had not? a song or two, but we've never done a Christmas album. We're going to do a full-length studio Christmas album, some classics and some originals. We're working on that while we're out on the DNA World Tour, which starts in May in Portugal. Your, I was, your passports, when I was doing the plane thing back in the day, I had to get a passport. Like, hey, Jojo, you need a passport for this, this flight. I'm like, oh, my God. So I ran to get a passport. My passport's all a little skinny thing, uh, one stamp in it. They go to whip out their passports. It looks like a phone book. Like, <laughs> like, oh, my God. That's what it's like being a backstreet boy. No doubt. These guys are the best dudes ever. What you see is what you get. So happy for these guys. Honored to be here. Thank, Thank you, you, Grammy Museum. The Thank Backstreet you. Boys. Thank you. Thank you, Jojo. Thank you, Jojo. Thank you. How Thank many you. fingers am I holding up? Thank all of you for coming out today. We really appreciate it. It means a lot to us. Thank you.